the April 2018 edition of What's New Massachusetts. Hop on the Orange Line and check out a few new and noteworthy hotspots in Somerville's Assembly Row, including American Fresh Brew House and Lucky Strike Social. We also visit two standouts in Malden, including Idle Hands Craft Dales and Solari's Pizza. And, get this, the Big Apple Circus is returning to the Boston area, unleashing a cavalcade of thrills and chills. What's new, Massachusetts? Here are your co-hosts, Sam Baltrusis and Sharon Filia. And welcome to What's New Massachusetts. My name is Sam Baltrusis. I'm an author and journalist. Joining me is my lovely co-host, Sharon Filia. Hey, Sam. Hey, Sharon. <laughs> so this, this edition of What's New Massachusetts, we're going to talk about two different neighborhoods. So we're going to talk about my neighborhood, Assembly Row in Somerville. Right, and mine, which is Malden. Awesome. So it's not really a sh like a neighborhood show now. We're going to yeah. compare and contrast different categories. Mm -hmm. And the first one is going to be microbreweries. Yes. So in Malden, we have Idle Hands, and it's actually very popular. Sometimes when I'm driving by, it is jam-packed with people, especially on Friday night and the weekends. And we're going to talk about in my neighborhood in Assembly Row, we're going to mm -hmm. talk about American Fresh Brew House. Which we just visited. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I think it's kind of interesting to, to juxtapose these two. Uh, Malden is up and coming. I think Assembly yes. Rose already is, is already came. It's like there's a lot that's happening right now. Right. So in Malden, there's a lot of new luxury um, housing being built, and specifically on Pleasant Street, there's going to be luxury housing right next to City Hall. They're actually sort of going to be combined, and a new shopping area is all going to be all sort of all in one shopping, and it's going to be open in the bottom so that you can actually drive under City Hall straight down Pleasant Street. It should be very interesting. So going to our, our American Fresh Brew House Club. Mm -hmm. So what are some standouts from that? That was It was a pretty awesome experience. It was really great because of the history of it. So American Fresh Brew House started out as a beer garden outside with tents where parents could bring their families and have beer and enjoy a good time, but also have their children with them, which is something rare. And I think that a lot of families, uh, particularly parents, really embrace that because they can relax and have the kids with them at the same time. And now they're, they're, they're in-house, they're right across from the Orange Line, easily accessible, good food, good appetizer menu, as well as good beer. It still has that kind of neighborhood vibe to it, It too. really does, and the staff was wonderful. Awesome. So we're going to run the clip on American Fresh Brew House. Let's check it out. This is Sharon Filiar from What's New Massachusetts. Here we are in Assembly Row at the American Fresh Brew House a beautiful brick and mortar establishment right here in Assembly Row. Now what's so special about this place is that it started as a beer garden outside and now they're inside. We're going to be speaking to General Manager Ray Rabitsky about that and about other things that are going on here in just a moment. now with Mr. Ray Rabitsky. He is the general manager of American Fresh Brew House. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Wow, now this establishment started out as a beer garden outside. Tell us about that. Yeah, so a couple years back we opened up a beer garden that's just on the other side of uh, this assembly row here. And um, over the years it became one of the most popular spots in this area. Outdoors, open, having a beer when it's super hot outside is an awesome experience and it was the only kind, only thing like it's kind of here in Assembly Row. It is, and what's really great um, and that I haven't seen too many places is that children can stay with their parents while they're enjoying a drink. That usually does not happen. So that's a tremendous draw in addition to Partners Healthcare being across the way. So you get a lot of those employees as well. Yeah, especially during the work week, we have a lot of employees that just come after a long day's work. They come sit down, they put all their bags down, their jackets off, and they sit down. And I'm like, I know exactly what you need, don't worry. <laughs> now we actually spoke before taping and you mentioned that you can tell the type of day one of the employees has had by the type of beer that they order. So if someone is having a particular particularly bad day, what beer would they order? Uh, probably our Trekker Triple, which is our Belgian Golden Ale, which is just slightly above 9%. Okay, and if they've had a good day, what would they order? Uh, probably our Happy Soul Blood Orange Hefeweizen. A nice, easy drink. Okay, so when they've had a really tough day, 
they go for the hard stuff. Got it, got it, got it. Now, what I really enjoyed was that they have a really great menu here as well. I was just eyeing these wonderful wontons with jalapeno and cheese. But what is your favorite uh, selection on the menu? Uh, probably our Brussels sprouts. Yeah, that is not my favorite. <laughs> It wasn't my favorite when I first started, uh, but with our fantastic cooks and chef here, I definitely recommend it to our customers. But you know, the American Fresh Brew House not only is great for its cuisine and it, and because you have wonderful brew uh, beers here, you're also really accessible. Assembly Row is burgeoning. There are so many shops here. We're right across from the Orange Line. It's easy to get through, to get here and get through here, and access to 93. And this is sort of like the second wave of a sort of um, of establishments that are kind of building up Assembly Row to make it even more attractive, not just to live, but to just come in and to have a great time. So um, how do you feel about all that? I mean, it's great. We're only like, what, 30 feet away from the T station. So especially for uh, Bruins or Celtics games at the Garden, we're only a few stops away. So people will come here before the game, come here after the game as well. And just commuters during the work week, they, this, we're the first restaurant they see when they get off the T. So as soon as they get off the T, they're like, we're going there. Now, I'd like to ask you about some of these very interesting names of the beers. I know there are quite a few of them, but we, I know you mentioned a few of them earlier. But what are some of the other names of your brews here? Um, so probably our most popular beers is our Flag Razor IPA, um, and we go through a rotating draft of beers. So we we'll typically have about uh, six or eight beers that we have year-round, and then everything else, every month we have something new. Or like last week we got two new beers. We have a Doppelbock that's called the Red Balloon, and we have a White Mosaic IPA that's called the High Hairbrand. So I would imagine that certain people have their special beers that they always order. Yeah. So that's also another draw to come into the American Fresh Brew House to try all the different beers and figure out which one you like the best and become a regular here. Well, Mr. Ray Rubinsky, thank you so much for joining us today. It's so much fun talking to you. Thank Continued you. success. Thank you. Appreciate it. having a great time here at the American Fresh Brew House. We just spoke to Mr. Roy Rabitsky, the general manager here, and getting to know about the history of the establishment, where it was, where it is, where it's going. I think I have my favorite right here, Happy Soul. I encourage you to come on down and try out all of their beer selections, not all at once. <laughs> So you can pick out your favorite. It's easily accessible to the Orange Line and it's in the heart of Assembly Row. And welcome back to What's New Massachusetts. Sharon, that was a great club. It was. It was a lot of fun going there. So, American Fresh Brew House, like, what was some of your favorite things from the, from the American Fresh? Well, of course, I loved the food. <laughs> <laughs> the general manager gave me the great American hamburger for takeout to bring home. It was delicious. And we shared the wontons. What, yes! Oh my gosh. The jalapeno <laughs> wontons. And at first, I said, oh, this is going to be too hot. It's going to be weird. It was so good. So, it had a hint of jalapeno flavoring, but it wasn't overpowering. I love the fries. So you, while oh, that's yeah, right, they were good. Your, with your burger, there was yes. like fries, and they were kind of like like a seasoned fries. And yes, probably the best fries in Assembly Row. They were they were good, and you dip them in. I mean, it totally throws you off your diet, but they are worth it. <laughs> it's a great place to go because Sam and I, both of us, really don't drink. But you can go there if you like a beer, like to drink beer, or if you don't like beer, you can go there and get good food for dinner. So what's, they're, they're planning on having a microbrewery in-house, right? Yes. Now, they actually have it set up right now. They just haven't started brewing yet. And what the general manager shared with me is that they're going to have a direct tap line from the unit right down into the bar so you get the beer nice and fresh. But there's one location that we visited like about two years ago, Idle Hands Craft Ales in Malden. Yes. They have actual working brewery in-house. Yes, and it's sort of like... To me, it reminded me of the Bat Cave. When you go back, there are all these big units and everything. And 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 I, I mentioned that when I drive past there, it's. 
packed, particularly after work, Friday evening, on the weekend. People go there to have a good time. And when it's warm outside, they have the umbrellas set up and you can sit outside and relax and enjoy the, enjoy the weather. Now, Idle Hands actually was formerly in Everett and they found yes. a brick and mortar location in Malden and it's thriving. Yes, yes. it was displaced, be displaced because of the new casino, but it was to our great advantage that they came to Malden. So let's check out our clip from Idle Hands Craft Ales. with the owners and founders of Idle Hands, Mr. Chris and Grace DeCatch. Thank you so much for joining us here at the grand opening. Thank you, thank, thank you for having us. Now, this journey began about a year ago. How did all of this start? Well, we, uh, we had a, another facility in Everett and uh, we basically got kicked out because of the casino that's going in there. So we were desperate to find a new location. Uh, put out the feelers to a lot of the local cities and towns around here. Talked to Kevin Duffy in the mayor's office. Um, and he was very, very accommodating. He said, come check out Mall, then we have some properties I think you'd be interested in. And, and sure enough, you know, there was this wonderful property right here, um, right next to the downtown area. And, uh, you know, it was a perfect fit for what we were looking to do. It most certainly is. And Grace, tell us, so what was the final uh, deciding factor for you to come to Mall? Did, did you have other cities that you were interested in, in locating to? I think it was really important for us. I mean, we, certainly we wanted to stay close to the Boston market, close to where we started with our fan base and everything. I think it was really just a matter of finding something that really met all the needs, kind of thinking about people coming in from the city, people driving in. We, had, at the same time, had just started our own family, so being cognizant of the family factor as well. So I think it was just a combination of like a, all these wonderful things coming together, which made it just perfect. Wow. And now you have a tremendous menu and you mentioned earlier that you and your wife actually put together the recipes for all of the beers. How difficult was that? Um, well, it's like anybody who has spent a lot of time in the kitchen. You become very comfortable with the ingredients that you're, you're used to. Um, and then it's then uh, figuring out how to manipulate those ingredients to get the flavors that you're that you're ultimately searching for. So, um, I you know I have a background in home brewing, and that's how I started uh, in in this crazy industry, I guess. Um, and I spent 18 years doing that, and just kind of spending a lot of time uh, playing with different ingredients and styles and recipes and yeasts to come up with flavors that I really enjoyed. That's amazing. So, Miss Grace, do you have a favorite beer that you prefer? <laughs> well, I ha I'd be remiss without saying that I love Blanche de Grasse. I, okay. Truth be told, it's named after me, but it's also one of my favorite styles. It's a Belgian wit. It's very refreshing, perfect for the summer, light, but just has a lot of particularly the way that Chris brews it, just has a lot of character to it. It's not like a single noted beer, so. Amazing. Here at the grand opening of Idle Hands, I'm proud to have with me Mr. and Mrs. Brian and Nicole Palazzolo, the owners and proprietors of Mystic Station located on Prospect Street in Malden. So Brian, why is Idle Hands important to you? Uh, Idle Hands is very important to us on many different level levels. Chris and I have been, uh, working together for a couple of years now since we opened Mystic Station. He's been providing us beer, excellent beer, that our customers have grown to love. And him moving here to Malden uh, is just going to grow us even further together, our relationship. That's great. So you've been working with them even before they opened up here. So what made you partner with them, with Idle Hand? Uh, you know, we just, we like to work together. They give us good beer and we're actually going to be providing some food for them here at the brewery. Um, so it works out perfect for both of us. It's a great relationship we've built over the past couple years and we're looking forward to the future. So if you're thirsty, come on down to Idle Hands located at 89 Commercial Street here in Boston. And welcome back to What's You Massachusetts. What a great trip down memory lane for us. It was. <laughs> it seems like it was so long ago, but it wasn't. It wasn't. But it was fun because everyone was there, and Idle Hands has really taken off in malls. And as I mentioned, always packed, full of people. And they have a great little appetizer menu, too, if you don't want to drink beer. But apparently the beer is very good. So in our neighborhood non-showdown <laughs> between Assembly Row and Malden, uh, our next stop is Solari's Pizza. Yes, Solari's Pizza. Ooh, it's good. So it is artisanal pizza that they make right there. And the proprietors, very, very nice people, very nice family. They work really hard to bring a great product to Malden. 
So as far as pizza, like uh, Assembly Row has multiple options, but they yes. just have the Medici's, uh, which is a, a Neapolitan style pizza. Oh yeah. And then they have Ernesto's, which is sort of a, it's North End favorite. Came to Assembly Row, so you have a couple of pizza options in Assembly Row. But we're going to run a clip from Solari's Pizza. I love it because it's a mom and pop type yes. setup, and the right. pizza is really, really good. Yes, it is. So let's check it out. Here with me now is Miss Amanda Zoll and Scott Solari, proprietors of Solari's Pizza, located here at 97 Medford Street in Malden. So Amanda, you were telling me just off camera that this journey started a while ago, about two years ago. How did all this get started? Um, we had a group of people get together over dinner and we were like looking for something to do that let Scott exercise his creativity and one of our business partners now suggested a pizza shop. He was looking for a commissary kitchen in Malden and he found this place and it had pizza ovens. So he thought, why not actually use the ovens and see what we could do back here. Okay, sounds great. Now, Scott, why is pizza so important to you? You mentioned how when you were in high school, pizza was a big part of your life. Tell us how. Uh, in high school, pizza was like, it was a bonding thing for me and my family. We used to go out and on early release days and stuff like that and we'd go get pizza and soda and stuff like that and just it brings back really good memories. What was your favorite pizza back then? Do you remember? Uh, pepperoni and onion. Oh, that sounds good. Maybe not the onions. The pepperoni was really good. Yeah. <laughs> now your pizza is artisan pizza. So can you explain to our viewers exactly what that means? Um, our, our pizza is artisan pizza. Uh, we actually um, focus on really um, really good ingredients and quality and um, we focus on sourcing um, the best that we can get really. Now, that's excellent. Now, there, you had a little bit of a challenge while you were opening up your, your pizza establishment. You have a very, very, very little one. How old is your baby? He is four months old and uh. he was born while we were in the process of getting all the final permits and getting this place open. And I mean, Scott was running back and forth from the hospital. I was calling vendors on my cell phone from the hospital bed, trying to organize our first Coca-Cola oh, yeah. delivery. So <laughs> it was a little bit of a rocky start, just getting everything together, like, and having a baby at home. It's great. It's definitely a challenge, especially like owning a business and trying to balance the kids. Um, Cause we also have a seven year old um, who lives with us, Scott's son, Thomas, and he is just, He's awesome, but he doesn't understand the amount of work we have to put in here. So it's definitely been a learning curve for all of us as a family. Exactly. So, And I know that you mentioned that's why Solari's is actually closed two days during the week because of the children. Yeah, we really, we need, we're a family business. And because of that, we need to make sure that we're not neglecting our family. Um, we're not able to really focus on our customers if we're worried about the kids all the time. And so we have a very good support system at home, but we also need to make sure that we make time for our children. Indeed. Now, Scott, um, you mentioned earlier off camera how important it was for you to come back to Malden to raise your family, but also to make Solaris a part of the Malden community. Why is that important? Um, just to be involved with uh, where our kids grow up. I mean, I feel that um, taking care of the community will take care of us in a way. Hmm, I'm a little hungry. I think I'll try that buffalo chicken pizza. If you're hungry too, come on down to Solari's Pizza located at 97 Medford Street here in downtown Malden. And welcome back to What's New Massachusetts. Sharon, that pizza looks so good. Yes, it did, especially the <laughs> buffalo wing pizza. <laughs> So, like I said earlier, we have a couple of options in Assembly Row. Yes. Now, Assembly Row, of course, is in terms of shopping and, and, and restaurants, they have a wider selection because it was sort of developed that way. But Malden is coming up, too. I agree. But as, as you mentioned, Assembly Row has tremendous options, great place for a date or to bring your family. Now, if you're looking for like atmosphere, I, like Medici just opened up, and mm -hmm. that's right around the corner for me in right. Assembly Row. And we do have a clip from them. Uh, but if you're looking for like kind of like mom and pop support the local, right. I would recommend Solari's Pizza in Malden. Exactly. And Medici's is more sort of sophisticated type of atmosphere. So, so, so you really have a choice there. So let's check out the clip from Medici.
here we are now with the National Games and Redemption Manager of Lucky Strike, Mr. Jim Bennington. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. It's well, such a pleasure. Oh, this is exciting because I've never interviewed someone with your title. So can you <laughs> tell us what exactly you do for Lucky Strike Social? Well, I have the privilege of sitting down and pulling together the best in electronic gaming and digital entertainment that we can find. So what we do is we handcraft an, an arcade full of the best competitive play games, cooperative play games, prize games, instant win, high five moment games. Wow, your eyes just lit up when you <laughs> talked about gaming. So I was under the impression that Lucky Strike Social was just bowling and eating, but it's not. Oh, no, not at all. It's actually a handcrafted experience that blends the best of bowling, the best food. I mean, when I say food, it's not just your average fare. Uh -oh. This is... <laughs> This is street food inspired, global street food. Wow. Think about all touches of the globe. We're bringing in each of those flavors, each of those palettes, and we're setting the tone on the plate for just, just an explosion of flavor. So this is so exciting. When is Lucky Strike Social slated to open? We're looking at an opening in April. We are that close. Wow, yes. and I assume yes. we're going to have a grand opening. Oh, uh, there'll be big spotlights shining in Somerville that oh, night. Wow. It's going to be spectacular. And so where exactly in Assembly Row is Lucky Strike Social located? We have the privilege of being right at the corner of Grand Union and Revolution Drive. So so so, so now for the for the uh, for the for our viewers, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. is that in 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 position with the T? How easily accessible to 93? Excellent question. Mm -hmm. We said exactly the halfway point between the highway and the T. We're right on the block, I say a block and a half off the T. We're connected to the Partners Health Building. If you're driving anywhere near here, you see that mm -hmm. sign? We're the ground floor of that. So this sounds like that it's not only for teenagers, adults, but it's for everyone. There's something for everyone. That's exactly right. We, we, we craft an environment that is family friendly during the daytime. And at nighttime, we want the adults to have just as much fun as the kids. Wow. So, so the lights get a little dimmer, the music gets a little louder, it gets a little <laughs> funner, a little edgier, and it becomes that spot where After everybody wants to, sleep, to be. the adults can come out and play. You know this. This, this is really great. So this gives an outlet for people to have something fun to do they can bring their family that's, there that's right. but but then that's also right. the moms and dads or couples or wh whomever groups of friends can go to Lucky Strike Social to relax engage have a great time get dinner and just relax it's 36,000 square feet of fun over two floors Wow there are two separate bars we have the kickstart on the first floor you come in you feel the vibe get a cocktail maybe have a little Sampling. We have a display right. kitchen. You can sit right at the countertop and watch the chefs pre prepare all of these cuisines, all of these touches on a plate. You don't see that often. Not, usually, not that usually often. Usually, all the That's chefs right. and sous chefs are sort of hidden back. There. Oh no, no. We want we want you to see what's happening. The energy and the action that has, happens in the kitchen is just as important as the energy and the action you're going to find as soon as you walk up the grand staircase. Mm -hmm. You're going to see just an amazing floor. Uh, just the culmination of Lucky Strike Lanes, the original. Wow. FTW Arcade, 110 games, that's 180 people playing, just oh having a good time gosh. and winning. <laughs> then you're going to see our floor shuffleboard courts. This is new to the Lucky Strike concept. It, this brings social to the next level. We're taking traditional floor shuffleboard, right. we anchor it with some really cool hip cabanas right. in a fun environment, and that sets right up next to a 60-foot island bar. Welcome back to What's New Massachusetts. Sharon, that was a great show. It was. We did a lot of stuff in this show. We had a lot of themes running through there. All right, so looking back, so Assembly Row versus Malden, what do you think? Oh, goodness. I mean, <laughs> I'm partial to Malden, but oh, my goodness, Assembly Row has a lot. But Malden has a lot to offer, too. I see, I love living in Assembly Row. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the options. But I, a part of my heart definitely is still a Malden boy. I understand. And, yeah. So I would think it's sort of like a tie. What do you think? I think it's a tie. Yeah, I think it's a tie. Depending on what you, on what you want to do, you can do both. 
assembly row, or Malden, depending on your preferences at the time. And there's a part of me that I would say, rec I would recommend supporting Malden. I feel like a, that it's up and coming. It is. It's sort of like where Somerville and Assembly Row mm -hmm. was is right. where Malden is, is going to be. So uh, Malden is up and coming. And I think that if you support Malden, things are going to work out great for the, the Malden community. It really is. And I must say that the mayor of Malden, Gary Christensen, is really spearheading the effort to bring in development and to really increase the um, the patronage of Malden. It's, it, it's a, it takes a while, but I think that the mayor is really trying to push that forward so that it can catch up with Assembly Row. And it's literally two stops on the orange line. So really Assembly Row, Wellington, Malden Center. Mm -hmm. Right there. It's easy. Hop on the T, <laughs> visit both neighborhoods. Right. Visit Sharon and visit me. <laughs> <laughs> Just bring food. Bring food and lots of happiness and joy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so speaking of happiness and joy, uh, the Big Apple Circus is coming. <laughs> Ooh, I'm telling you, I went to the circus as a little girl. It is so much fun. Children love the circus. And I was doing my little research um, on the Big Apple Circus. They have horses, acrobats, clowns, um, the tightrope. And I was looking at some of the videos and the children's faces are so bright because <laughs> children love all of the different things to look at. And it's just a wonderful experience. And it's great for the moms and dads to get a little bit of a break. <laughs> Well, this is the first year that it's going to be in, in Somerville's Assembly Row. Yes. Which is quite exciting. And, and I, I'm, I don't know where they're going to fit it. I have no idea. <laughs> because generally, the tradition has been to bring, bring the Big Apple Circus into Government Center, which is a huge plaza. So that's been every year. But now it's in Assembly Row, so I don't know how they're going to sort of juxtapose everything. But I'm sure they'll figure it out. And while you're at the circus, you're going to visit all the cool places that we visited already for Absolutely. <laughs> the show. And the kids love <laughs> Love Legoland. It's always packed in there. And you can visit American Fresh Brew House with your kids because it, uh, it's family friendly. Yes, and that's one of the things that is that is, that really makes it a, a huge success, in my opinion, is that parents can bring their children, and they actually have a section where parents can enjoy a beer um, and have their children with them, and the children can eat you know, some sandwiches or some hamburgers. So we're going to close this show with a clip from Big Apple Circus. Have a great month, and see you next month on What's New Massachusetts. Bye. Bye.